forget, thanks for checking in for another one of my videos. Episode number four, leading into the Australian summer for 2018-19. Guys, today is a how-to video, looking at how I maintain my cricket gear. Guys, I will put some links down in the description bar so you can fast forward to the item that you're looking for. Plenty to cover today, guys, so let's get into it. Alright guys, so the first product to look at is shoes. Now these are my um, bowling or fielding shoes over the last couple of years, the New Balance 4040s, and I've already taken the laces out. The laces are actually pretty easy and relatively cheap to replace if you want to, but you can chuck those into the washing machine and uh, wash those or soak them in a bit of water. Guys, for the items that you'll need to maintain your cricket shoes is a stiff bristle brush, and a bucket of warm soapy water, which is what I've got here. So the first process here guys, and you'll see that I've got done a relatively good job at the end of season. I've got in with a stiff little brush and you just wanna clean off as much of the debris and so on that's, uh, that's on the bottom. And generally that is some good motions away from you, um, and that'll clean all the dirt and rubbish off the bottom of your, uh, off the bottom. Uh, if you do have a little bit on the sides, you can do those on the side of the shoe as well. Next thing you need is the uh, cloth, that is uh, a damp cloth, and essentially you're just wiping the, uh, the shoe all over to get as much dirt and grime as you can off the shoe. Now guys, if you are someone that has, um, uh, if you've encountered the magic erasers, so these are a friction based foam eraser that says you don't actually need any cleaning, cleaning product on them, um, then if you've encountered those, you can actually use those for any of those stubborn pieces. Um, and remember guys, to clean your cloth out relatively regularly, otherwise you're just smearing them across. And that's pretty much it guys, uh, for shoes. All right, guys, the next product to look at are batting gloves. Uh, if you look after your batting gloves pretty well, you can get multiple seasons out, them, out of them. First thing for these guys that you'll need is a, a bucket of um, warm soapy water and a, and a clean cloth. A pretty reasonably good quality leather conditioner. Uh, I happen to wear RM Williams boots, so I, um, I've got uh, some RM Williams conditioner, that uh, leather conditioner that I use, but it doesn't have to be, you don't have to specially go out and buy a particular um, high quality leather conditioner. You can actually use um, hand moisturizer does the same thing. All right, guys, so the first process here is your nice clean cloth and just giving the outside of your fingers. So these are the Michael Clark limited edition batting gloves that I've been using for the last couple of seasons. Uh, and so it's just a case about giving those a good wipe over on the, on the outside. If you do have a split finger glove, um, make sure you open up the splits and get in and wipe in between those as well to make sure that you get any dust or grime that's, uh, that's in there. And that keeps the outside of the glove looking nice and, uh, and clean. Coming over to the palm. So for this one, you'll need a little, uh, a little cloth as well to apply the leather conditioner. Uh, and inside it's more like a, like a, a paste or a polish inside. Um, and you don't want a huge amount on the cloth, just enough to, uh, to have the cloth covered. And then I generally recommend, if you can, is to actually put the glove on because that's the easiest way to actually access it. Opening up your hand as, uh, as much as you can, we're just rubbing every piece of that exposed leather palm with the leather conditioner. Now what you will see is it will start to change colour and go a little bit darker uh, on the uh, on the parts that are absolutely sucking that uh, that leather conditioner in. You can go back for a little bit more so that you're getting a good coverage there if you're finding that it's starting to stick. Don't forget to do your thumb as well, both on your uh, top hand and your bottom hand. All right, guys. So you can see there that it's start that's a little bit uh, gone a little bit darker. All right, so we're putting the cloth away that has the leather conditioner on it. We're going to a clean cloth. Now, what I have done is I've done one of my gloves earlier. After you have conditioned your glove like that, you really want to leave it for about 10 to 15 minutes to allow that conditioner to soak in. But you need to come back and buff it off. So the leather conditioner can be quite slippery if you leave too much of it on. And so that's why it's really important to come back and buff it off afterwards. 
Again, try and put the glove on. This is, I'm obviously right-handed and this is my right glove, so it's difficult to put on. But essentially, you're just following the same process to rub the leather conditioner. Make sure it's all in and there's no large chunky bits actually sitting on the surface because that will deteriorate your glove. Once you're reasonably happy that you've got all of the leather conditioner off, I would strongly recommend putting the gloves on and putting them on properly and moving them a full time, a few times. What this will do is help the leather to remember and get a little bit of memory as to where the creases are. Um, then, once you've got both gloves done at the same time, I strongly recommend then rubbing the gloves together just to help get the, uh, the leather moisturizer in there or the conditioner in there. And you can kind of see there, there's a couple of darker patches where it's gone in nicely. What that will do is make your gloves nice and grippy and nice and supple again. Right guys, then we're looking at your batting pads. So generally with batting pads, I try and keep them as clean and pristine as I can. So these are batting pads I've been using for about three seasons now, and they are still nice and white. So what you need to maintain batting pads is your uh, cloth and warm soapy water, bicarb of soda if your pads are a bit on the nose, and uh, one of those magic erasers if you're having a spot with uh, stubborn uh, red ball marks. A towel also comes in very, very handy for batting pads, and I strongly recommend a towel uh, to actually wipe off the exterior of the, uh, of the pad. All right, so starting off with our cloth uh, that's been rinsed out in our warm soapy water, we're just wiping down all of the vertical boosters in the front of the pad, um, just getting any of the dirt and grime off those. Paying, paying sort of special attention to the knee because you do find that you do have a tendency to put your knee down on the ground when you're playing a few shots and so you should give those uh, the knee a bit of an extra wipe as well. After the front I generally recommend going to the towel then and just drying off and it doesn't need to be uh, any type of towel in particular just a normal beach towel will suffice and you'll get most of the dirt and grime. Now guys I generally do this with my batting pads at the start of the season, at the end of the season and in the middle of the season uh, and that helps them stay in a nice maintained uh, condition. Coming around to the inside guys you have to treat the parts of the inside your pads a little bit differently depending on what they are. So at the top here on the top hat we've got it's a brushed um, cotton so it's more of a uh, it, it's more of a tacky lining same thing through the middle here of the knee protection and the actual main vertical booster through the middle of the pad where it says spartan here so in that case you can hit him with your cloth uh, to give that a good wipe down in all of those across all of those sections again get your towel and give him a wipe through those sections as well Was the bottom of the pad does actually, in this particular case anyway, is actually leather. You can actually use your leather conditioner or your moisturiser on the bottom there if it starts to deteriorate, but this guy is actually looking pretty good, so I'm not going to worry about doing that today. Because if you like this pad and it does have the soft sections on either side, and it might actually even be the middle, if that goes a little bit smelly, you can actually treat it. Now, the first thing you could try is something like a Gent Glen 20. The smell is due to the bacteria in the inside the actual pad from your sweat, um, and that's what the well, that's what the smell is. So you can you need to kill that bacteria in the first instance, and something to cover its odor. So you can so try something like a Glen 20. That's a that's a bacterial deodorizer that you can use. Uh, and the other piece that you can do that works quite well is actually using bicarb soda or baking powder as it often is called. Now this isn't the, uh, the box, this is just the one from our cupboard that we decant into. And what you're looking for is a sprinkle of the bicarb soda into, across those kind of fabric areas. In some cases it will be a little bit chunky, that's okay. You can break those up and just spread those in. Now the next piece you want to do then is actually rub your bicarb into those because what you're looking to do is attract the uh, the smell to that and so your bicarb into there will absolutely help that. So you're looking for a good uh, a, a good amount of bicarb into the uh, into the soft padding that sits on your legs. Again guys I've done one of those earlier 
And in the case, you can actually take something like a, a ruler or something and outside and give that a good bash to get most of those off. However, if you need to do it this at night, you can actually use the vacuum cleaner. I've got a little Dyson handheld here with the broader nose on it, and you can just vacuum all of that stuff out of it. Then your batting pads are nice and fresh and good to go. All right guys, so that's pretty much batting pads. All right guys, up next is your actual batting helmet. Now, the first thing with your helmet is that the inside strap does come out. I would generally recommend taking that out after either you've had a fairly lengthy innings or net session or every couple of weeks and wash that throughout the year. If your helmet has some of these grey uh, padding inside that are removable, they aren't in this particular version of the helmet, but if they are removable, I would generally recommend taking those out and washing those as well. Right guys, your helmet is a fairly straightforward thing to, uh, to clean. You don't want to get very much moisture on the actual outside of your helmet at all. I would, however you can, however you do end up with some dust, actually forming in and around the peak of the helmet and in and around the uh, actual um, face guard mounts. So guys, what I use is actually a dust pran brush that's never been used for cleaning up dust uh, or cleaning up stuff off the floor. I only use this for cleaning dust off my workbench or on my helmet, so it is quite a clean brush. Uh, and it is nice and soft bristle, so I generally recommend go and buy a new one rather than using a used one, because otherwise you'll end up with uh, with some quite bad markings on your on your helmet. So in and around the actual peak of the visor is where you can get in behind, and all you're looking to do is actually brush that dust off your helmet. Same around the uh, actual mounts on the side, and that's generally the way to get any of the dust or stuff off of your helmet. Now you might end up with one or two spots that are that are on your helmet. That's okay. You can use a clean um, cloth. Uh, to actually get those. So it's just a damp cloth and any of those kind of stubborn points where you see that your helmet's been rubbing, you're going very lightly across them just to give it a general wipe. Now you will have the material darken up a little bit and that's okay, but it will dry. I generally recommend this doing at minimum the night before you're due to play. Um, generally a couple of days beforehand would be advantageous. Well, the other thing is, is that the strap of your helmet that goes in underneath your chin can actually get quite sweaty. So I generally say if you use a chin cup, take off the chin cup and the, uh, the end piece and give that strap a really good wipe because it can get quite sweaty. You can get build up of sunscreen in there. It's just generally a little bit nasty. So I generally recommend giving that a wipe as well. Uh, frequency for wiping those chin strap or wiping that chin strap I would generally say as frequently as you need to, but as a general rule, I'd say beginning of the season, end of the season, and halfway through, subjects that you having you know, a, a really, really good purple patch where you get a lot of good runs. Right, guys, that's pretty much all it is for the helmet. Uh, once your stuff, once your padding's dried, then you put it back in, and you're good to go again. Right guys, now that our uh, kit bag is basically empty due to the fact that we've had a look at shoes, pads and gloves, first thing is I generally recommend to do kind of a, a start, middle and end of season again with your kit bag and the first thing to do is empty it out. Get rid of any rubbish, get rid of anything that you're not actually used or you haven't used in the first six months of the year, subject to a couple of those emergency type, type medical type things. After that, and you'll have a little bit of debris that'll kick around in it. Empty your kit bag out if you can. But generally what I've found is that the surrounds of the top of the bag prevent you from getting a good shake of it. So quite often, your little dust buster is the way to go. And that'll get rid of most of your debris and stuff in there. All right, now the next, the next piece, guys, is a cloth with some warm soapy water, which has been the consistent piece across the board here, and giving the inside of the bag a good wipe out. Your kit bag takes a bit of punishment throughout the year, and uh, so giving it a good wipe out, and the ability to air before you go and put stuff back into it is quite important. 
So the outside of the bag is the material, but the inside is waterline. So you can, if you do have a spot where you've got a bit of dirt and grime on the outside of your bag, namely I've got a spot here where it looks like a bit of, a bit of bird do on there, um, then you can use your, your cloth there to being a little bit more vicious with it and you can get that out off nice and clean. All right guys, well thanks for checking in for this episode. Still a whole swathe of videos to come in this series leading into the 2018-19 Australian summer. All right guys, we'll see you in the next instalment. Bye for now.